All righty, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Braden Sharon. And before we get into today's video, we are going to pick the winner of the $100 giveaway that we ran in last week's video. All you had to do was leave a comment. So I've got them all loaded up here. I've excluded my reply, so this is all of y'all's 53 comments. And we're gonna have this random comment picker randomly select a winner. So hopefully y'all can see this. Here we go. The winner is Luke Butler. Congrats, Luke. You are the winner of the hundred dollars. I'm gonna reply to your comment letting you know you won. Or uh, if you see this video first, I'm gonna have my email as well as my Instagram linked in the description of the video. You can reach out to me on either one and we'll get moving forward on getting you your hundred dollars. So huge thanks to everyone who left a comment. I think we're gonna continue doing the money giveaways on the sponsored videos. And uh, yeah, congrats Luke once again. With that out of the way, today's video is, I guess we'll call it a keeping it real style compilation. It's a series of three different trips that didn't go quite as planned. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them in the comments section down below. I can get back to you there. And I'd really appreciate y'all left a like on the video. That helps the channel a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, take two. Well, we just launched at another jetty early, early this morning before light. And it was way too rough just to make it out of the jetty. So it is now eight o'clock. We made a couple phone calls, switched gears, and we are now at a bigger jetty that we should be able to get out of because it's wider, less turbulent. Because out past it, you can see it was, it's calm. Got some rods to fish. Plan is to go look for cobia. Got some live bait. Uh, we'll also fish for snapper maybe. And if the water is clean, then we are going to hopefully dive, but not counting on that. Not expecting it to be clear, but we have guns if it does end up being clear. So yeah, we're gonna get rolling here. Hopefully this time we can make it out the jetty. This is what we're rocking. I got 50 pound fluoro leader and then just a, I don't even know what size, but a J hook. flasher lost my last flasher and I haven't gotten a new one so I'm actually just gonna use some throw flashers on fishing line they should bob up and down spin around shine and then got a weight and a little buzz bomb deal that I found I bet you that actually draws something in All right, I think we are ready to rock. We are out here on the Wahoo grounds. Got a stranger with us today. Yeah, no one was down to throw down. So I am gonna be the only diver, unfortunately. But we got Grace here. She is gonna be captaining the boat, making sure we are being watched. Not ideal to dive along like this, but. Conditions look so, so good. 
had to come out here and try it. That's rock and roll. Here we go. Gonna walk through the underwater. But first, I do want to reiterate the situation is not ideal, but I am going to be going about the diving conscious of that. Firstly, I'm going to be hanging right by the boat, but then also these wahoo are more of a, a surface hunting style fish, so I'm not going to be diving deep or pushing the breath hold. I'm really going to be hanging right by the boat at the surface most of the time. So given that, I am comfortable enough doing this. With that said, after I loaded up, I cut the camera off, and it wasn't five minutes in the water. I turn around, and there are three wahoo hanging right behind me, checking me out. So I click my camera on, make a duck dive, and try to close the gap here. I'm a little bit too forward and obvious with them, so they start to make their way out. Being that I had just jumped in and saw Wahoo, probably a little bit of Wahoo fever involved with this, but I closed the gap on this one in the back here. It's quartering out, let it rip. But I miss. After slowing it down, it seemed like it was perfect. You can see here at the end of that shooting line there, it's lined up perfect level, gonna hit. But it seems like almost as if this fish makes a burst at the sound of my shot. And then by the time the spear gets there, it's at the tail area and it just goes right beneath it. So, very unfortunate. I'll talk more about it once I hop out of the water. But immediately after the shot, we've got three sharks that show up. They hang around me, looking to see what's going on as I reset and reload. It was wild. It was like the sound of that shot just flipped a switch, and they were there, checking out what the commotion was about. that is about all the action for the diving. I saw, I think, another wahoo or two way out in the distance, but could not get close like this first run in and really just hung out with these sharks for the remainder of the time. Made some more dives, spent a good while looking for more wahoo around this buoy we're diving a buoy but aside from like I said I think seeing a couple more way out in the, the distance no more luck out here you get one shot you're lucky if you get more than one opportunity today was one of the days that I only had one which is still cool there was a good chance we weren't gonna have any or even see any walk so I'm glad we saw them but we just missed with this dirty water these fish come in close and then whenever they're swimming their way out you know, I get worried, or I got worried that I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't see them again. So that's why I kind of rushed the shot there. They were making their way out. If it was cleaner, I probably would have taken more time, been patient with it, but whatever. Also that particulate, I don't know if y'all can see it, but 
All that stuff in the water made it hard to judge distance. I don't know if I shot over or under that fish. I'll have to look back at the footage. Oh, scam. Oh, jacks everywhere. Gosh, dang it. They better wreck me. There's tons of jacks right under us. 100% about to get smoked. 100%. There he is. <laughs> Grace, you want to fight a jack? I don't know. I'm going to rig up that other rod for you. Look at him. There's a bunch right here. Big school. Jesus. I just don't want to lose this lure to a jack. Look at them all. You see that? Yeah. Tanks. I don't know why they're so shallow. Right. Well, the issue now is going to be getting the lure through the jacks down deep to where the crazy stuff could be. Pretty big girl. Whoa. Please don't have my lure cut in half. Nah, it's good. Bring it up here. I got more space. Are you gonna keep it? Nope. Hold back. This is the same kind of shark I was seeing when we were wahoo diving. It's kind of kind of stout. Really did not want to catch this because I have my jig on there. And he's hooked really good. Well, shark made another hard run. I started trying to horse it and it broke. I lost my jig. But it's already four. We're still two hours out. So we're gonna start rolling back. But wind's supposed to kick. And looks like rain's coming through, so. We're going to boogie. All right, well, storms have been relentless this morning. It's currently around noon and they've kind of dissipated or they've moved off. We've still got some inland here and then some stuff south, but it's already noon and they could still pop up. So don't think we're gonna send it offshore like we planned at least far. So I don't have to worry about that again. I got a little, a little dicey there for a minute. But yeah, we're just gonna stay here around the jetty. Might jump in if we like the clarity. Right now it's kind of iffy. Uh, if not, I've got this really juicy looking two ounce jig and I'm gonna try to stick a redfish. Try to make something out of the day. It's really nice and calm now, but those storms coming through brought in a lot of wind and lightning how big were those waves with the when the storm came it was just like real deep uh troughs three feet at 2.5 seconds yeah <laughs> like just super stacked three foot blowing 20 25 not ideal 
Yeah, when it was white capping in there, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't mention white cap. All right. <laughs> so we decided to dive. Here are highlights of all the fish I saw. Visibility isn't anything to get super excited about, but it's doable. So we figured we'd try to make something out of the day and maybe shoot a few mangrove snapper and just check things out. Diving the jetties is always eventful and can be a blast if you can see and the current is manageable. Spent a lot of time diving jetties. And just for reference, you might have seen something flash across the screen, changing the watercolor a bit there. I actually enhanced the picture so y'all can see and make out the fish a bit better. But yeah, I'm just cruising along the jetty through the rocky areas here. This is where those mangrove snapper like to hang out. I've already been seeing snook, tarpon, redfish, some sheep's head. Right when I jumped in the water, I saw a couple mangrove snapper. They were pretty small. Not looking for a huge mangrove like we see offshore, but just something with a decent hunk of meat on it. A nice size for the jetty. I don't typically see him get nearly as big as offshore. But after a while of looking at all these sheep's head without any luck on the mangroves, I figure we get some meat in the box. So I shoot this sheep's head that presents a perfect shot. Nice sheep's head. Let's kick off the jetty diving. Nice. That's a solid jetty mangrove. There was two that like rolled in side by side over here. Uh huh. I saw some little ones first and some sheep's head smoke. There's like a little rock that had some activity around it. Yeah. So George ends up getting a nice eater mangrove snapper. Like I said, we don't really see him get as big as we shoot offshore, but for the jetty, that is a shooter all day. And then I got the sheep's head. I prefer eating and hunting those mangroves. They're more elusive. But on a day like today, when I just can't find one, I will take that sheep's head. They taste great as well. And then here, I'm just going to let this clip roll out in the moment. I'll explain more after and at the end of the video. There's a goliath! There's a goliath grouper! <laughs> That's so cool! He's grunting, it's super loud!
first Goliath grouper I've ever seen in Texas. I was not expecting to see that at all. So pretty astonishing encounter, to say the least. Goliath grouper down this way are very, very few and far between. And I'll talk more about it at the end of the video, but just wanted to say for here, that was pretty wild to see. So yeah, that about made my trip really awesome. After that encounter, I kept diving around. I ended up trying to follow where that grouper went, trying to see if I could get another look at it without luck. Once it kind of flicked its tail, it stirred everything up, and I, I lost it. But saw quite a few more redfish, snook, sheep's head. Here's a pretty big school with some shooters in there. Decided not to shoot anymore. There went a big bull redfish out of that crack. And here are some nice speckled trout. I saw some black drum earlier too. I don't know why I didn't shoot it, honestly, in hindsight. Maybe I was paying attention to the other fish and didn't even think about it. Maybe I thought it was a sheep's head. I don't know. Here's another shot of some sheep's head. Saw quite a few more shooters, but didn't want to clean any more fish. I decided after shooting that one, I was good. We're actually going diving again the day after this trip and then the day following that. So, wanted to get some meat to make worth of the trip, but not stock up on sheep's head. If I was going to stock up, I want some some of that snapper. But yeah, these are the rest of the fish shots. I'm just going to let these roll out, and then I'll pick back up at the end of the video, talking a bit more about that Goliath. He barked at me. That was really cool. Could shoot some more sheep's head, but I was really looking for the mangrove after George shot that one. Dude, the highlight of this trip though for me is that Goliath. Yeah, that's that was yeah, so that's cool. Awesome. Living in the cracks. He's kind of out in the open. I saw him at first, like a big shadow, and I was like, I thought it was like a, I didn't, I couldn't really tell because it's so dirty, but I was like, maybe that's like a, a 30 pound, 40 pound Kubera. And then it kind of like had a, a wave of murk and it cleared, like you just see like a fin. And I dove on it and the whole thing went woof and flicked and then kind of turned and it was just Goliath. I was like, that's sick. There was a bunch of sheep's head up there, but I I only saw like two mangroves this whole dive, and they were like yeah, that big. Well, that about wraps it up for the compilation. Three trips that didn't go as planned. Struck out on the Cobia, missed the Wahoo. We were so close but didn't connect. That's just the way it can go. You might go all the way out there and get one opportunity and that's how it went down. So that was that. And then lastly, wanted to go offshore, got chased back by the storm, but 
at the jetty we had that unexpected run-in with a Goliath grouper. And uh, before I cut this off, I did want to talk a little bit more about that. A lot of y'all have probably seen a lot of Goliath grouper videos from Florida, or maybe you're from Florida or an area with a lot of Goliath grouper. Well, long story short, down here this way, they are very, very, very few and far between. So it's kind of unheard of, really, to see them. I've only heard of a couple other people seeing them diving. But for the most part, there really isn't much of a population. There used to be years and years ago, back in the 60s and 70s, guys would go out and shoot them all the time. But these days, you don't see them. I mean, I've been diving for seven and a half years now, and in a lot of areas, a lot of spots, and this was the first one I've seen in Texas. So that was wild. Um, and just wanted to give y'all a bit of backstory on that uh, for those kind of unaware of where we're diving and why that was so surprising. So yeah, I think I covered it. That's all I've got. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, if you have any thoughts or questions, leave them down in the comments and I can get back to you there. And if you enjoyed it, remember, hit that like button. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And that's it. I will catch y'all later.